exploitable. We're going to show you how simple it is to make a beautiful pritikin fish. I watched a cooking class where they showed us how to braise a fish with no oil. It's going to sear and, and brown as well. What makes eating healthy in America difficult is that most restaurant food, particularly fast food restaurant food, is designed to make people fat and sick. The clients here pay a lot, $3,000 a week, to eat less in the hope that they will lose weight and stave off heart disease. The food looks great, but the portions are tiny. I don't know how I could survive on this. It's still really a matter of discipline. You're going to have to change your eating habits. You're going to have to exercise more than most people feel like. Uh, but the nice thing about it is the more you do it, mm -hmm. the easier it gets and the better you feel. And as a side effect, you don't have to worry so much about heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. Up six, up seven. In the Pritikin gym, a real-life retired drill sergeant puts Nine. paying clients through agony. Ten, five more, up. I know there's an easier way. Two, up. Is there anyone who hasn't heard about the Atkins diet? It tells you to eat all the fat you want. It's been around since the 1970s, but it only really caught fire in the last few years. I know that you can eat eggs and protein on your diet. Why not any milk? Well, milk is got, has got lactose in it. Whenever you hear... A word and that was when Dr. Robert Atkins became a media celebrity. And uh, that's what... Milk too. More what so. took everyone aback was he said, keep the fat, but hold the fruit. Too much sugar. Lay off the carbs. No starches. No rice, no bread, no pasta. So cream is about the one thing that the cow puts out that doesn't have carbohydrate. See, so if you would have, you don't have cereal, do you? Well, there are some low-carbohydrate cereals now. You and put I will sweet do, cream on it? And I mix it with heavy cream? Yes, I do, sir. That sounds, it sounds delicious. Fattening. Oh, it's delicious. delicious. Hey, what's So I bought the book, and I'm like, no way. Like, I can't have bacon and eggs for breakfast and, you know, like something really cool for lunch and, like, like a primer for, and like, and, and lose weight. It, it, it's not possible. When was this? This was a little over a year ago. Wow, so this I is, you, this is you? Yeah, that's I mean, me. that's amazing. Big girl. Hard to recognize you now. <laughs> Lisa Sandinato says she's tried lots of diets, but she lost 45 pounds on Atkins and enjoyed every minute of it. You know what I like the best about Atkins? Is that I can get a big two pound lobster with a big thing of butter on it. And just sit there and go, <laughs> and I see all my little Weight Watcher friends sitting there counting their chicken points. I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Take the skin off, too. Don't forget to take the skin off. You can give it to me. I'll have that. The Atkins diet defies common sense. One man who wanted to test it was science journalist Gary Taubes. I tried it, and it was amazing. You know, it's everything, uh, 20 pounds that I'd never been able to lose in six weeks and stopped exercising, you know. It was kind of a surreal experience and that uh, probably, in a sense, uh, informed my opinions from there on in. I mean, after that happens, you say, I want to know what's happening and I want to know why. In 2002, Taubes published an incendiary New York Times magazine article. I got crucified in a variety of publications. A Washington Post reporter went after me. The Center for Science and the Public Interest went after me. I've had friends who have accused me of having a brain transplant because suddenly I turned around and said, maybe low-fat diets don't work, and maybe low-carbohydrate diets are the answer. By criticizing low-fat diets, Taubes had committed nutritional heresy. That particular article has absolutely ruined my life as a nutritionist. I can't go anywhere without being asked about it. Um, and it, it attracted so much attention that I think it's really caused the nutrition community to stand up and take notice. The Atkins diet contradicted everything that nutritionists and the government had been telling people for decades. The USDA food pyramid recommends that people fill up on carbs like pasta, bread, and potatoes, and avoid forbidden foods like steak and cheese. 
Well, I think the Atkins diet is popular because it waves a magic wand and it says everything that was bad for you is now good for you. What the Atkins diet does is to lower caloric intake. In fact, all diets lower caloric intake. The question is whether it's healthy in the long run and whether it's sustainable. And I think the jury is still out on that one. 85% of those people didn't need a bypass after we went on our program. The diet wars had become so contentious that in 2000, the USDA put all the diet gurus in one room to thrash out an agreement about what we should be eating. He said he's working on the data, but he's been making this claim for a long time. No, I haven't. And that's what I, excuse me. But I haven't been me. making that claim. You just did, and you don't have Before. the evidence to back it up. Now, this diet's been out there for 30 years, or close to and 30 years. And I haven't years. been able to fund a study. I, I've uh, asked Excuse me. Asked excuse me. Ask. Ten million books in print, and you can't fund the study? Now I can. And I will be excuse the first me. doctor to dig into his own pocket to do a study. Agriculture Secretary Dan Glickman tried in vain to keep the peace. I'm reminded, I think it was H.L. Mencken who once said, for every complicated problem, there is a simple and a wrong solution. And I think that uh, this is, these are complicated problems here. There was not a lot of consensus. And I recall that Dr. Atkins and Dr. Ornish just about went at each other physically. Now, I'm not aware of any studies that Dr. Atkins or Dr. Sears have published in any peer-reviewed journal about anything ever. It was amusing to me, but I don't know if it was edifying to the people who buy books and, and try to find ways to lose weight. Are you actually saying that the Atkins diet is harmful to your health? I think for many people it is definitely harmful to their health and we're seeing, and it's not just me that's and saying in what that. what way? What's the worst thing that can happen? The worst thing that can happen is sudden cardiac death. But even short of that, the blood flow to the heart is reduced. Your kidney function may be compromised. Osteoporosis is increased. But Taubes argues that anti-fat dogma is more ideology than science. It's a little frustrating even from my point of view because no matter how much research you do, you're going after a monolithic dogma in effect. And dogmas protect themselves. Gary Taubes attacks what he calls the low-fat dogma and says that diets like yours have led Americans to be fatter, that you're part of the problem. Well, it is provocative. It does sell newspapers. And, you know, it tells people what they want to hear, which is also a good way to sell newspapers. You know, it tells people that bacon and sausage and pork rinds and butter and brie are good for you, and nothing could be further from the truth. Brie is not good for me. <laughs> you're killing me here, Dr. Arndt. <laughs> There's more at stake here than a food fight between diet gurus. What happened back in the early 90s was the food industry cashed in on the low-fat craze and started removing fat from our food. About 10 or 15 years ago, somehow we got this notion that, aha, if we take the fat out of foods, we will be able to reduce the total caloric intake and people will be able to control their weight. And so industry got very busy making low-fat, reduced-fat, fat-free products, and they flooded the marketplace, and they flew off the shelves. Industry turns on a dime. They can do things quickly and resourcefully, and they tried, they gave it their best shot. I'm a big ice cream guy, so I uh, oh, right? always have been. You would think low-fat was not yeah, fattening. They do. They do. Think again. So, uh, Joe Hotchkiss, head of Cornell's food science department, showed me what goes into a product like low-fat ice cream. Turns out it has just as much sugar as regular ice cream. Their trick is to cut back on fat by using less cream. All foods are really made of a combination of four major components. Water, carbohydrate, protein, and fats. So if you take out the fat in ice cream, you have to add something back. You can't just simply remove the fat. It's not as easy as that. Typically, we'll replace the fat with either one of the other three components, and most often that component is a carbohydrate. Their recipe replaces the missing fat with carbohydrate in the form of milk powder and some seaweed extract to help bind it all together. 
coil and trouble, boil and bubble there. Exactly. But, uh, no eye of the newt. Have a taste. We'll have to send it to the blast freezer to get it frozen. Uh, okay. But it can be tasted. All right. Still that's creamy. That's low fat. That's low fat. Wow. So in order that to does really not taste like low fat, no, I gotta it's a, say. It's a good formulation. You, you fooled me. Here. Yeah, it you fooled me. But while this ice cream does have less fat, says Hotchkiss, what he replaced it with has nearly as many calories. And in losing weight, calories are what really matter. So this isn't exactly diet food. If you add